I am at Mountain State Park in Indiana. And I'm now on this pretty treacherous boardwalk because it's soaking wet. It's not super cold, but it is kind of a nasty day. And I'm hiking a little trail over to the mounds. Woo, that is slick. And um, I'm gonna check that out. And anyway, the visitor center was closed like 10 minutes before, but the guy let me in to get um, some literature so I can see what the heck I'm doing out here. I've got about an hour and a half till dark. I think I can hike around there before dark and check it out. Having grown up less than, I don't know, maybe three miles as the crow flies from the Spyro Mounds, I've always been very interested in the mound builders. These mound builders, supposedly very ancient. I think 160 BC, the Adena culture is what they're talking about here. I'm gonna do more research on that later. Um, but pretty cool little place. Like, that's a little bit of an up cla upper class duck. Like, he actually, he actually marked his address. See, I could deliver to that. See, even the ducks can mark their houses. Why can't you people mark your houses? Good grief. Coming up on the Great Mound here. I believe that these were used for ceremonial purposes and they have in the literature where they believe these mounds and earthworks aligned with the solstices and to mark seasons and up to 100 of the brightest stars in the sky um it's very interesting very interesting stuff ancient people were pretty stinking smart now standing at the more or less center of the Great Mound. Um, it's blocked off just short of the center. Um, on the sign it said there was once a small mound at the very center that was excavated in 1968, I believe. You look around this mound, which is more or less circular. It's almost moat-like. You can see the giant depression that runs all the way around. And the center is more or less level with the rest of the ground. As you look at the hill, there are several rises and dips. I don't know how well the video conveys that, but I can see it clearly with my eyes. There's a good example right behind that large dark tree. Those are concurrent, according to archaeologists, with alignments of the setting sun um, and also at the time that this was made with uh, the stars at that time. So it's a very interesting place, obviously a very sacred place to the culture that built it. Definitely has kind of a feel to it, you know, like if you respect history if you respect people's and ancient cultures like you know that you are at a very sacred site to somebody at some point in history and I don't know it's got a little bit different feel to it it's a very cool place so Mound State Park in Anderson Indiana about an hour from Kokomo about an hour and eight minutes um, probably a little bit less than an hour from Indianapolis. It's starting to get dark on me. It's really cold and wet, and I'm probably gonna wrap it up here. I may drive and have one little tag at the end of this. There's another earthwork that you can drive to um, on the other side of the parking lot, and I may drive down there and take a look at that as well before I leave. Well, I'm glad I came up to this one because though not very much seems to be made of it in the literature, um, this one is very impressive. Like, 
not as impressive as the Great Mound, but it is very impressive. This one is rectangular in shape, even though it looks like a circle. Um, and the openings on either end, like on this end and on the other side, align with the, um, they act as like a gateway for the rising sun during the spring and the fall equinoxes, which is really cool. Lines up with so many ancient cultures across the whole world. Whole world. It's like Stonehenge and so many other places. Pretty cool. And you can actually walk on this one. So I am going to walk out into the middle of this one and look around. I'm also glad I came to this one because that sign for this earthwork actually shows that there are two more earthworks up to the, on the north end of the park. And I will drive up there and take a look at those as well. And you wouldn't have known they were there from the literature that I have on the place. It's kind of like they didn't even mention it. So I'm gonna go check that out once I'm done here. I am in the general location of where these other two mounds are located according to the sign at the uh, big rectangular mound that is called the circle mound um they are out here in these woods somewhere this is very curious to me that there are two mounds marked on the sign in this area and there is it's not in the park literature it's only found on that sign um, and I'm just really curious about this, like why they're not marked and preserved. Um, you would just think that anything that's 2000 years old, and part of a giant mound complex, Native American mound complex. I was going to start using First Nations, by the way, for that whole thing, like not even to be politically correct. I think that's the most accurate. Canada does it a lot and I really dig it. First Nations people, um, that it's not, these two specifically are not marked anywhere. Um, I have to do more research. I have to get on the interwebs and find out, see if I can find the archeological survey of this area and where everything's pinpointed and see if I can find any reason for why only the Great Mound is protected um, from walking upon because when you go down to that big rectangular mound and also the fiddleback mound which it said is one of only five known that are in that shape and it's the only one of those five that is yet preserved that may have just been in the state of indiana um but regardless there's no fence around it and there is a hiking trail that went right through it and you could see the trail where on both the rectangular mound and the fiddleback mound where it had beaten down and obviously erosion's doing its thing. Now, you know, the, the explorer in me is like, hey, cool, I can walk on this and check it out. But the intellectual side of me that knows better is like, WTF, like, these are not protected, this is strange. And not only not protected, I mean, the hiking trail over that rectangular mound, and I'd say also the fiddleback mound specifically, are actually doing damage. You can see how much has been lost um, from the footpath, how much um, soil has been beat down in erosion and the like. And these two don't even know where they are. So anyway, that is, um, that is the Mound State Park in Anderson, Indiana. And glad I came up here. It's only about an hour and eight minute drive, like I said, and really enjoyed hiking around in the cold and the rain, but it's a very cool place and now I have something to research to keep me busy for a while and understand um, this whole situation they've got going on here. Alright, we gotta tag this on the end. We're gonna try this place out. When you see a grease pit like this that according to the Google box makes the best hamburger in like the state and it is old school like this this is where you have to have dinner.
Boy Andrew Luck kicked it in here, apparently. Yeah. That was legitimately one of the best hamburgers I've ever had in my life. That was awesome. Very glad I stopped it. We here at Studio 119 would like to remind all of you out there listening, wherever you might be, that though the hill might be steep and the trail be rocky, the mountaintop awaits. Carry on.